Hey everybody, it's uh, Chris from Redstone here. Today I want to talk about some decent budget HDMI consoles. Well, with the exception of this one. This one's not a budget, but I thought I would throw it in here. So this, this is the one that doesn't really fit the category. This is the AVS NES. I think all after said and done, I think this was about $350. Like I said, it doesn't fit the category, but I thought I would just throw it in here because it is amazing. This is not an unboxing video. I've had these for quite a while, so. So yeah, let's have a look at it here. Um, I guess I left the power supply in here. This is the super cheap bog standard power supply it comes with. I don't, it feels really cheap. I, I didn't even use it, so I just left it in the box. Um, this is a very nice unit. This upscales NES games to 720p very nicely. And it also has a Famicom slot. These are original power and reset buttons that they found in some warehouse somewhere that were intended to be used in the consoles but never were, so they're new old stock. You got your classic controllers, it's got a built-in 4 score, and it's got a built-in Game Genie. I guess this could be for a floppy disk system, I'm not sure. Then you have your, unfortunately this is mini USB, not micro USB, so these tend to break really easy if you're not careful with them. And you got your standard HDMI. I love the look of this, I mean it's, it's a nice throwback, but this is not the reason I'm making this video. I'm just gonna put this over here. What I want to talk about are these Hyperkin products here. This is the Mega Retron HD. This is an HDMI Genesis. Sorry for the dust. I've had these for a while. So I was looking for some budget-minded HDMI consoles for the Genesis and the SNES. And of course you can, you know, go all crazy and buy the analog NT ones, which are way out of my budget. So I thought these are sub $100. I think this one was 75 and I think this one was a 69 uh, Canadian dollars, of course. Um, I got these on Amazon and they're very nice looking. They have a nice homage to the original console. Um, it will do NTSC J, NTSC U for North America and PAL with this switch on the back here. It does 16 by nine stretched or you can do classic four by three. It has, micro USB, HDMI, and classic composite out. I've never actually tried the composite out on this because why would I? I should though, just to see what the quality is like. But the HDMI out on this is really good. What really impressed me with this is the sound reproduction. Like when you play Streets of Rage on this thing through a proper stereo system, it thumps really nicely. Like they did a really good job. The picture is nice and clear. Um, I'm sure there's the analog NT or the analog products are probably better. I mean, my friend also has a, the, uh, I think they're called the Retrovision HD component cables for his Model 1 Genesis and we ran it through my uh, Sony PVM and actually that looks better than this. So I might have to invest in a pair of those. So later on, I'll show you some uh, footage from this. We'll just put this over here. Here is the Supa, Supa Retron HD. This is the Super Nintendo version. I've had both of these for quite a while. This one sort of has a blending of Super Famicom styling and the North American because of the purple. Big eject button, power, reset. You can use your own controllers. I mean your old SNES controllers or you can use the boxed ones. This one also has micro USB, HDMI, composite out, which again, I've never tested. 16 by nine, four by three, and it's got NTSC and PAL switch here. So what, this one is also very good. 
the first thing I tried was Star Fox because that is a very hard game for the Super Nintendo to run. So I guess you're looking between 15 and 20 frames a second. This one plays it at a solid 30 frames a second. It feels really good. The sound is really accurate. Again, I will show you some footage from that. Uh, these are the controllers it comes with. They actually feel really good. The D-pad is really nice, nice and stiff. You can do diagonal crouches really nice with it. I like the feel of it. It's it's really solid. It's not creaky at all. Like I'm pushing on that pretty hard there. It's really nice. And what I like about these is that they actually have 10 foot cables. So I just wanted to quickly mention here, I forgot to bring this over. This is the controller for the Mega Retron HD. I actually like it better than the Genesis controller. You've got your six buttons. It's got a nice, nice firm D-pad. Uh, Hyperkin calls this a Squire controller. Uh, you get one, so it's really weird. You get two, two SNES controllers with the Super Retron HD, but with the Mega Retron HD, which is, you know, priced around the same, you only get one of these. So I was poking around Amazon one day and I guess they were blowing them out uh, at, what was it, $6.99 or $7.99? So I picked up a second one because I actually like using these on the, my actual Genesis better than my Genesis controllers, mostly because all my Genesis controllers are just old and really degraded after all these years. I have to source some better controllers, but I like this because it's got six buttons. It feels really nice. Um, it's got a mode button here. Honestly, I'm not sure what that does. I guess I should RTFM. But there you have it. Put that over there. Put this over here. So there we have it. We have the Super Retron HD and the Mega Retron HD. Sorry for the dust. I should have dusted these. I've had these for two or three years now. And for the price point, uh, running on a 65 inch 4K TV, it sounds and looks great. I didn't personally notice any input lag with these. I don't seem to notice that. I have a lot of friends that seem to be more sensitive to it than I am, so I'm not, I'm not really a good judge of it, but I don't think there's that much input lag with these. So. so now that we had a quick look at the physical side of things, let's capture some footage. We'll do a comparison between actual and these HD consoles. All right, here's some test footage between the Mega Retron and Gens Plus GX running through RetroArch. Right off the bat, there is a bit of a color difference. I'm using a subpar HDMI capture device for this, so I think that might be the problem. So if you can just ignore that and just focus on the image quality, you'll see here that Sonic running through the emulator uh, on the best uh, Genesis emulator available is very close. Other than the color difference, it looks pretty much the same to me and it sounds really good as well. Good old blast processing. Also, if you notice any stuttering, that is probably the cheapo capture device that I'm using here, so please forgive that as well. Next up, we have Golden Axe. Same deal, Retron HD versus Gens Plus GX and RetroArch. After playing uh, Streets of Rage 2, I realized that this is a very bad port of Golden Axe on the Genesis. I had a very hard time playing this because it just feels like crap. But Again, let's just focus on the console versus the emulator. Again, you can see the color difference. It looks as though the whites didn't come through properly, as far as I can tell. But yeah, the buttons don't make sense, so as soon as you start, you hit the button and you get your little nukey nuke here. But yeah, other than the color, this looks really good. It plays, well, it plays as smooth as this port is. I regret choosing this game. 
for doing the comparison. But this just, just is an awful game. The sound effects are awful, the controls are awful. Sorry, this is turning into a Golden Axe port game review rather than... Anyway. Okay, next up we have Streets of Rage 2 running on the Retron, that's sorry, the Mega Retron HD. So for this one, I'm going to let the audio play because I think it sounds really good running on this console. I stand corrected. So inside of RetroArch and Gens X GX, there is a audio driver called Nuked, which uses the YM3834, or it's the 3438, I can't remember. And this entirely changes the sound and makes the Mega Retron HD sound like muddy garbage. So here is a clip of the opening running through RetroArch on Gens Plus GX using the YM3834 or 3438. I can't remember, sorry. Here we have a comparison between Streets of Rage 2 running on the Mega Retron HD and Gens Plus GX running on RetroArch. Again, if you could ignore the color difference because that is the capture card, I've also started to think that maybe the muddy audio coming from the Mega Retron HD is actually due to the subpar capture device I'm using because when I have that console hooked directly up to my TV using my my hi-fi system it sounds fantastic it doesn't sound as muddy as this so could be attributed to that but i still had to show you the ym3438 nuked option in retroarch because it just makes it sound so much better on the pc so as you can see here this game looks and runs pretty much the same on the console as it does through emulation nice and smooth and it looks really good. Let's take a look at the next game. Now it's time to take a look at the Super Retron HD. That's right, I said Super because that's the way they spelt it. I don't know why. So one of my all-time favorite games is Saturday Night Slime Masters, so I threw that in. I'm using BSNES version 115 because it's the most accurate emulator out there. I've been using it for years. Uh, the only option I had for enlarging it enough to capture it was 960p versus the 720p slash 1080p that the capture device outputs. So you'll notice that one, the BSNES is wider 
than the Super Retron HD for some reason. I guess that's 1080. No, it should be the other way around though, but this is the way it worked out, unfortunately. So these games actually both sound really good. They both look really good. I didn't notice any input lag because this game, if you had any input lag, you would lose horribly and I was able to dominate as I usually have because I've been playing this for 20 some odd years. And I just love this game. It's one of my all time favorite Capcom games. And you guys all know how much I love Capcom. Hint, hint, I made a video about it. So here's me as Gunlock beating the crap out of Biff. And. God, I've been playing this 20 years and I don't even know his name. I'm a terrible person. Or we can attribute it to old age. Here we go. Plays flawlessly, smoothly. Great controls. I kick these guys' butts sideways. So, didn't detect any input lag. Again, there is the color difference, but we've gone over that already, so. On to the next game. Next up, we have Super Mario World. And for some strange reason... Saturday Night Slime Masters was the widescreen, and the Super Retron was not. But with Mario Brothers, sorry, Mario World, the Super Retron came up widescreen, and the emulator didn't. So I don't know if these games run in different resolutions, and that's what's happened here. I thought maybe I got the videos mixed up, but I triple checked it, and I did not. So again, these games look pretty much the same and sound the same to me. They run really smooth. I didn't really detect any input lag. I Maybe a little bit compared to the uh, Mega Retron HD. I'm having trouble with these names. Mega Retron HD, Super Retron HD. But these games look pretty good, sound pretty good, and run really great. Again, we have slight color differences, but yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. I keep bringing that up, but if you start in the middle of the video, you of course aren't going to hear me say it three times, right? <laughs> anyway, time to move on to the next game. Okay, the final game in our list here for the Super Retron HD is of course Star Fox. Now, initially I said that I didn't feel any input lag, but when I played it this time through the capture device, through OBS I did find input lag but I'm assuming that's because I'm going through uh, HDMI upscaling console a capture device and then through many many buffers inside of OBS so I'm gonna attribute the input lag to that but other than that I also thought I recall that this ran at a very smooth 30 frames per second when I hooked it up to my HD TV but again, maybe because I'm running it through the subpar capture device and then through OBS, that maybe the frame rate has suffered a little bit for some reason. And again, um, I'm noticing that the Super Retron HD has stretched out the game into an almost 16x9 screen uh, as opposed to BeastNES, which has got a 4x3. Now, let me double check here. Yes, the switch on the Super Retron HD is set to 3x4 yet it's still capturing it in sort of a stretched widescreen. So again, I'm not sure if it's the subpar capture device I used, or maybe there's a setting in uh, OBS that I missed, but I am capturing it in 1920 by 1080. The console puts out 720p, so this should have scaled properly with the prop proper aspect ratio. But then again, this is a cheap capture device that I picked up off of Amazon and yeah you get what you pay for right and of course you know it had good reviews but you know we all found out that that means diddly squat on Amazon anyway that's a story for another time um, other than that uh, this game ran really good it sounds really good and I'm actually impressed that it actually plays super effects games as well as it does now it's been so long since I played this game I really suck at it now so 
out of practice, I guess. Plus, the input lag doesn't help either, right? So, I mean, the capture device does have HDMI out, so I could have technically been playing it on a monitor hooked up directly to the capture device, so maybe that would have reduced the lag a little bit. I haven't actually tried that since I bought it. I mean, I'd actually be surprised if it worked compared to, you know, considering what I paid for this thing on Amazon. So, I mean, it's the brand name on it is Easy Coo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway. Okay, that wraps up the uh, comparison between uh, a good accuracy emulator and the consoles themselves. So let's, uh, let's do a wrap up here. I wanted to clarify a few things that I mentioned earlier in the video. In regards to the Streets of Rage 2 audio difference, I think the Mega Retron HD has good audio, but I think that Retro Arch with the nuked YM3834 makes it sound so much better that it actually makes the console sound muddy. So what I did is I actually hooked up the console using the composite outputs and to my regular TV and it actually sound fine through the TV. So I think it's just the stark contrast between what what the emulator is putting out versus the console, but the console itself is good. In regards to the input lag, I also hooked up the Supa Retron HD to my LCD screen and played a bit of Star Fox and there was no input lag. So all the input lag that I was feeling from the consoles was from going through the capture device and then going into OBS and then playing it on my computer screen. So if there's any input lag, it is very, very small. Uh, the Star Fox FPS, earlier I said that it seemed to run smoother through the Retron HD. It does, but I think it's more consistent than a regular console. I don't know. I might have been remembering that incorrectly because I it was a few years ago that I played it. So, And I tried the, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the, the Mega... Mega Retron HD composite out for the first time and it actually looks really good on just my regular CRT. Later on I'll hook it up to my PVM just to see what it really looks like. And also the aspect ratios I guess I guess maybe the console and the emulator were stretched because maybe the games use different like I know Star Fox I think runs in a smaller resolution than most other SNES games so it you know has a slightly better frame rate with the FX chip but I mean I hooked up the Supa Retron HD to my LCD to test out Star Fox and it was square so I think the difference might be that the consoles use square pixels and maybe the emulator doesn't use square pixels or it's the other way around I'm not sure but but overall if you're looking for a couple of budget HDMI consoles that won't break the bank, these two are very good. I mean, even the pack-in controllers feel really nice and solid. They don't creak, and they have 10-foot cables, which is a bonus as well. I can't see you going wrong picking one of these up. Now, Hyperkin does make an HDMI NES. Now, I bought that and returned it immediately because it had really bad slowdown in it so I guess whatever emulator that they put into it was just horrible I mean it looked okay but it just ran like crap I I instantly returned that which is unfortunate because it was actually a nice looking unit so that's what urged me to spend a little more to get the AVS NES which was about 350 Canadian I'm not even sure if they make those anymore but I mean you could also get the uh, analog uh, Ness as well, which is roughly the same price, maybe a little bit more. I can't remember off the top of my head. But uh, yeah, I mean, best bang for your buck. These two consoles are really good. I mean, you could also go with all the mini consoles that are out now because they're easily hackable. Custom firmware on, and you could do pretty much anything with them. I mean, I have the Ness, I have the Super Famicom, I have the Genesis, I even have the PlayStation Mini. And uh, they all work great as well. So, I mean, there's many different options out there. I mean, there's also, of course, emulators running on PCs as well. But if you like, you know, the physical hardware like I do, then the Supa Retron HD and the Mega Retron HD are good value for the money. That's it for this video. 
Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more great content for redstone.ca, and we'll see you in the next video.